Carbs. Some people use them to run long distances, lift heavy weights, and improve athletic performance. You guys don't carb load anymore? While others say that eating carbs is the fastest track to obesity. <laughs> I've had no carbs for nine months, and now I'm in the perfect position to learn how it affects me to eat the only pure carbs that come from an animal. Do you have honey? Honey, 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 honey. I'm not talking about that kind of honey. I'm talking about the liquid gold bee vomit that lies the shelves of every supermarket. Unlike the carbs that come from plants, honey has no fiber, no phytonutrients, no anti-nutrients, and no additives of any kind that will affect my experience so that I can answer the question, should you eat carbs? Although it doesn't leave any remains in the fossil record, there are clues indicating that our ancestors were eating honey possibly before they were even humans. Our closest living animal relatives eat honey any chance they get, and modern hunter-gatherers rank honey as their favorite food, putting themselves in some pretty precarious situations to get it. They'll make a bird sound, and the bird will show you where the honey is. I go in, one sting. Ah! Guy sticks his fucking hand in the tree, <gasps> scoops that out. They're lighting him up and he's eating the honey. And it anyway. does nothing to him. The Hadza people are one of the last remaining hunter-gatherer tribes and rank honey as their favorite food, using it for as much as 50% of their calories. They just run everywhere. Run everywhere. I'm like, what's going on? We've been running for five hours. You guys aren't sweating. And they don't get tired. You saw the pictures. Yeah. They're ripped, back muscles, six packs. The kids have six packs. It is tough to argue that these carbs are having any negative impact on the hods of people who use honey to fuel their long range hunts. My run times have barely changed at all over the last nine months on the carnivore diet. So I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen now that I have some carbs in my system. It's actually the first time I've ever been excited to go for a run. Carbs are famous for fueling athletes through endurance sports because our body breaks down all carbs into glucose, which gets stored as glycogen and used as our primary fuel source. First time running with carbs in my system, and I feel absolutely horrible, which is actually quite a big improvement over the suicidal thoughts I had last time I ran, so hopefully my run time improves as well. We need glucose to function, so if we don't eat carbs, our body will create glucose from protein and fat through a process called glucogenesis. I think that's how you say it. In addition to being hard to say, gluconeogenesis is hard to do, so our body will limit the production of glucose to what it needs to function, rather than what's optimal for athletic performance. In a three and a half week controlled study of race walkers, the group fed a high carb diet improved their speed by 4.8%, while the group on a high fat diet reduced their speed by 1.6%. As we run out of stored glycogen, we begin converting body fat to energy, which takes more time and more oxygen, requiring us to perform at a higher percentage of our VO2 max, leading to earlier fatigue. Not bad. Looks like I shaved about a minute off of my 5K time, so I guess we can count that as a small victory for carbs. Both my research and my experience show that eating carbs will improve performance at endurance activities even for people who are in ketosis. But the only reason I'm even running to begin with is because my gym is now locked down for the third straight time. Fortunately, before I got locked out of the gym, I had enough time for one last workout to learn how carbs affect my strength. It's only been a couple of minutes since I've had that honey and I already feel like I'm wired, like I had my first energy drink of a lifetime. I feel like I don't wanna take my pedal away from the floor because I am just ready to go and get lifting. Weightlifting is anaerobic, meaning that we perform it without oxygen, so the additional VO2 to max requirement shouldn't affect my strength, but the muscle glycogen stores still might. I've only been back on carbs for a few hours and I already broke every personal record that I had in the gym. It might turn out that carbs are mother nature's best performance enhancing supplement. These improvements were most notable for my dips where I shattered my previous record by 10 reps. Another possible explanation for these strength gains is that eating carbs lowers your sex hormone binding globulin, which increases your free testosterone. The gyms are still shut down, so I don't know if these numbers would continue to rise, but I do know that most people's concern about carbs is the rise they'll see on their scale. In the 20th century, nutritionists started recommending high carb, low fat diets when they learned that one gram of carbs has less than half the calories of a gram of fat. The problem is that a gram of carbs and a gram of fat are not equally filling and our body has different physiological responses to each macronutrient. There are three digestible forms of carbs, 
mono, dye, and polysaccharides. The simpler the carb, the faster your blood sugar rises, the quicker your insulin spikes and your appetite returns. Now I know what people mean when they say they have a dessert stomach because no matter how full I feel, there is always room for more honey. Eating carbs will also reduce or completely eliminate your body's production of ketones, which limit your appetite by suppressing the hunger hormone ghrelin and increase your feelings of satiety by stimulating the production of fullness hormones like GLP-1 and cholecystokinin. Now that I've got carbs back in my diet, I feel way more hungry throughout the day and I also feel like I can just keep on eating forever. Arguably more important than the physiological changes caused by these carbs are the psychological challenges of stopping yourself from overeating. Eating similar flavors of food ends up reducing our appetite through something called sensory specific satiety. When we introduce a new sweet flavor, we stimulate our appetite and relax our stomach, creating room for more food. This becomes an even bigger problem if we combine carbs and fat to make foods hyper palatable. After nine months of no carbs, no dessert, and no cheat meals, the combination of dairy and honey made my appetite completely insatiable. I discovered that I can make ice cream using nothing but animal products, which is quite dangerous for my body fat. Eating carbs doesn't make you fat, but if they make your appetite insatiable, you'll end up eating more and getting fat. I think these carbs made me gain almost six pounds in just over a week. Before I started eating carbs, I was eating as much food as I wanted without gaining any weight. Now that I'm eating honey, I'm gaining weight before I even feel full. However, after only a week without combining honey and dairy, my weight went back to where it was before I started eating carbs. The biggest problem with carbs is that they stimulate your appetite. When I'm in ketosis, I can ignore my hunger while staying focused and easily stop eating as soon as I feel full. With carbs, meal timing becomes a much higher priority and I need more willpower to put down the fork. Eating honey as part of a recipe makes it very easy to overeat but eating it on its own leaves my hunger quite manageable while providing physical improvements. If you don't exercise, then simple carbs like honey probably aren't necessary or beneficial, but if you have a sweet tooth that you can't avoid, I highly recommend eating your carbs as a single ingredient rather than part of a recipe. You will probably never eat a full bag of apples, but you might end up eating a full apple pie. Like honey, fruits are simple sugars, but unlike honey, they contain fiber and micronutrients which will help you feel full. I'm curious if eating fruit can satisfy my sweet tooth while providing physical benefits without breaking the scale, but before I add fruit back to my diet, there is one last food that is more closely related to animals than plants are, fungus. If you want to learn what happens when I add mushrooms back to my diet, having my first fiber in more than nine months, then subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thank you for watching and I'm excited to continue sharing this journey with you.